gem minerals and properties. Objectives. The aim of this content is to introduce the importance of gem minerals in the galaxy of mineral kingdom. The following are the objectives of learning this module. Importance of gemstones. Classification of gemstones. Physical properties to understand the identification of gemstones. Optical properties to understand the identification of gemstones. Role of physical optical effects in identification of gemstones. To understand gemstones as organic material followed by conclusions. After attending this module, the learner will be able to understand about the importance of gemstones and their identification. Introduction A gemstone is a mineral with exemplary properties of beauty. It may be an aggregate of a mineral which, due to one or more such optical properties, can be rendered beautiful through cutting and polishing so as to be used in jewellery or other ornaments. The cut and polished final product derived from the uncut gemstone is called as a gem. The word gem is unique in all respects. It signifies something superb and magnificent. When we say he is gem of a person, it signifies that the person referred to is very good. You can take any language of the world. The word gem signifies exemplary nature and quality. The study of gemstones is an integral part of the subject of mineralogy, economic geology and geography. The Mineral World Among the infinite variety of minerals in the entire mineral kingdom, which constitutes more than 4,000 minerals, there are very few substances which stand apart from all others by the possession of exceptional characters. These few alone attract the attention of persons endowed with taste and refinement. The question then arises as to what are the essential qualities for the mineral to be called a gemstone? The basic qualities that make a gemstone and gem material suitable for use in jewellery are beauty, rarity and durability. Beauty is not a measurable quantity. It depends mainly on subjective factors associated with the appearance of the stone. For example, if the stone is a transparent colored gem, the depth of the color and degree of transparency will be the primary factors, while in the case of diamonds, it is the brilliancy, optical purity, and absence of color that are important. They give greatness to it. Rarity, on the other hand, is generally related to availability, supply, and demand. The rarity of a stone can be influenced both by fashion and by variation in the availability of the source material. Initially, amethyst was a rare and costly gem until the discovery of the South American amethysts in the 18th century. In the case of diamond, the cost of the finished product is not entirely due to rarity, but is also influenced by the economics of the mining and recovery. It is also related to extraction from a rough stone and the high cost involved in polishing and marketing operations. Durability is yet another property of a gemstone. It is related to its hardness. This makes a gemstone suitable for use in the jewelry industry. Without this property, a gemstone would not be able to withstand the everyday wear and tear or any chemical attack from pollutants in the atmosphere. This has a great significance in lapidary work, in diamond polishing, as well as in gemstone identification. The common man generally knows very few gemstones. Any Indian may know about the nine 
Navagraha stones. The Westerner may know well about the birth stones. However, there exists a whole galaxy of gemstones in the whole world. Classification of gemstones. Depending on certain virtues, quality and fashion trends, a system of classification was adopted by several people over a period of time. The gem minerals are classified into the following kinds. The natural gems, which include the most precious ones like diamond, ruby, sapphire, emerald and semi-precious stones like chrysoberyl, quartz, topaz, tourmaline, peridot, beryl, garnet, spinel, opal, turquoise and zircon. The synthetic gems which are synthesized using experimental techniques. The examples include cubic zirconia, synthetic rutile, synthetic ruby, synthetic emerald and synthetic diamond. The organic gems that are formed due to organic processes. The examples are the pearl, coral, ivory and amber. The last variety is the imitation gems. These are made out of glass and plastics. Precious and semi-precious stones. The term precious and semi-precious have often been used in an attempt to separate them into two arbitrary valuation categories. However, in present times, the terminology is maintained for export-import purposes. Due to the ever-increasing demand for different varieties of gems, the market is flooding with simulants, synthetics and composite stones alongside natural gems. Color enhancement of low quality gemstone is also a widely applied process from ancient days and the techniques have been further and further refined through advancement of technology so much so that extremely careful scrutiny is now required to separate a natural good quality gem from a synthetically prepared or a poor quality color enhanced equivalent with the help of physical and optical properties. Properties of gemstones Gemstones are extremely costly and therefore for gem testing no chemical test can be applied. A series of physical and optical examinations are hence performed in gem testing laboratories in order to identify a particular stone. All gemstones are characterized by a set of physical and optical properties. These properties are also used for assessing the quality of gems during trade. Gems are the most highly priced ornamental stones rated based on their unique properties. It is necessary to understand these properties first before going through the individual stones. Physical properties of gems. Each mineral is characterized by a set of physical properties that assists in its identification. External shape, form, habit, weak planes, hardness and tenacity, specific gravity, color, diaphanity and luster are some of the important physical properties of the minerals. Color, however, is variable and is dependent on impurity and other factors. Diaphanity is an important property which qualifies a mineral to be cleaned as a gemstone. Unusual properties like incandescence and catoency are characteristics of some minerals which elevate them to the level of gemstone. Luminescence Properties like luminescence and those based on magnetism and electricity help in distinguishing certain stones. A few minerals have characteristic odor, taste and affinity to water and grease. Synthetic stones have physical properties analog to their neutral counterparts. Man-made stones that are not represented in nature also have their own distinct physical properties. Habit. External form or habit helps in identifying the rough stone. 
even in a fragmented piece, where an original crystal surface is preserved, helps in recognizing its habit. Habit can also be deduced even when it is water-worn, as in a pebble. Early formed minerals, like olivine, have well-developed crystal faces. Fine crystals are common in pegmatites, as well as in wugs and geodes. In metamorphic rocks and most gem minerals, such as corundum and garnet, have a strong power of crystallization and occur as ideoblastic crystals. Shapes. The more important crystal habits are equant or equidimensional habit. Example, stubby crystals of olivine. Prismatic or elongated habit. Example, epidote which is elongated parallel to B direction. Tabular or flattened habit. Example, feldspar, bayrite, where crystals are flattened parallel to certain pinacoids. Apart from equant, prismatic and flattened shapes, other habits may also exist in crypto-crystalline minerals like chalcedony. They may have the outward appearance of a bunch of grapes, botorioidal, mammillary glands, mammillary, kidney shape, reniform, or test as globules, globular. They may also grow in the form of a cone hanging from a substitution, stalactitic. Color. One of the most enhancing properties that qualify a mineral to be called as gemstones is its color. Color substances absorb certain parts of visible spectrum and the resultant color is a combination of unabsorbed part of the spectrum. Rubies absorb a greater part of green, violet and yellow and transmit red and a small portion of blue. As a result, it appears red with a purple hue. Only recently, the causes for color variation have been scientifically understood. Largely due to the work of Cust Nasi of Bell Laboratory, New Jersey, USA. Cust lists as many as 15 categories of causes that change the color. Perception of color also depends on the sensitivity of the human eye. In emerald, along with green, some amount of red tint is also transmitted. Our eye, however, being more sensitive to green, ignores red color. With the help of certain filters, such as Chelsea filter, transmission of red by emerald can be detected. Chromophores. Most minerals are colorless when they are in pure form. Presence of only certain chemical elements is responsible for change of color in minerals. Such specific coloring elements are called as chromophores, color containing. When chromomorphic element forms the essential constituent of a mineral, then it is called as idiochromatic. Self-colored, idio means inherent. When it occurs as an impurity replacing the essential constituents, then the mineral is termed as allochromatic, other color. The term pseudochromatic, false colored, is used when the color is caused by the physical optical effects like iridescence and opalescence. Elements controlling unique colors. Elements that are responsible for color are the transition elements. Copper, chromium, manganese, iron, nickel and vanadium. The elements are characterized by partially filled electrons in the inner D block orbital, 3D electrons. Unpaired electrons in the orbital are responsible for colors. These electrons are excited by the quanta of energy available in the visible spectrum, which leads to absorption of a certain part of spectrum. It is not just the presence of elements which affects color, but much more important factor is how they are affected by the local structural configuration, like type of coordination, its asymmetry and distortion due to polarization, band type, as well as interaction with neighboring cations and anions. 
these effects together are known as crystal field or ligand field. Even less than 0.1% of such element would be enough to produce appreciable perception of color. Specific gravity. Specific gravity of a substance is the ratio of its weight in air to the weight of an identical volume of pure water at standard atmospheric pressure and 4 degrees centigrade, the temperature at which water is most dense. As specific gravity is a ratio, it has no unit of measurement. Determination of specific gravity is one of the most effective and commonly used modes of gemstone identification since specific gravity of each mineral is either a constant or can vary within a very short range depending upon the substitutions. It is equally applicable to both cut and uncut gemstones. Hydrostatic method. The most common practice of measurement of SG or specific gravity is by hydrostatic method. Hydrostatic method is based on the principle that an object immersed in a liquid experiences an upward force, buoyancy or loss of weight, equal to the weight of the displaced fluid. The method includes weighing of gemstones in air and then weighing it again when completely immersed in pure water. The specific gravity of a specimen is determined as specific gravity of gem equals weight of gem in air by weight of displaced pure water. Specific gravity of gem equals weight of gem in air by weight of gem in air minus weight of gem in water. Specific gravity of a gemstone is determined with the help of a single pan electronic balance with accessories fitted for specific gravity determination. Hardness. Hardness of a material is defined as the ability of that material to resist abrasion. Comparative values of hardness in most scale for minerals are available in all standard mineralogical textbooks and form an important property for identification of rough, uncut stones. However, hardness tests for cut and polished specimens should, if at all, be done with much more precaution since any abrasion with harder material will leave a permanent scratch mark on the polished surface. However, synthetic corundum pieces kept in the laboratories are sometimes used as scratch plates for testing suspected diamonds. Durability and hardness. Hardness renders durability, although it is not the sole controller of the later. There is certain other lesser important qualities like brittleness and toughness which contributes to the durability of a stone. Zircon, for example, has a hardness of about 7 to 7.5, but is brittle, as a result often suffers chipping. Similarly, diamond, even after being the hardness known mineral, is brittle because of its cleavage planes. On the other hand, two jade minerals, nephrite and jadeite, have a considerable degree of toughness despite their hardness values of 6 and 7 respectively. They do not represent single crystals but a mass of microscoping interlocking fibers or crystals. As a result, they can withstand much more wear and tear than the harder mineral zircon. Cleavage and parting. Cleavage is a set or multiple sets of equally spaced planes in a crystal along which the atomic bonds are much stronger compared to the bonds across the planes. As a result, the crystals, gemstones in the present case, are easily cleavable along the cleavage planes. This property is usable both for identification of raw gemstones and for cutting and shaping of hard gemstones. Cleavage renders a gem brittle. For example, with a sharp, strong blow, even diamond, the hardest of all known minerals, is cleavable along its octahedral cleavage planes. The minerals with very well developed cleavage, example diamond, topaz, etc., need special care during lapidary. 
In contrast to cleavage, parting planes are more widely spaced and less regular. Gemstones like corundum and labradorite have parting planes along the planes of repeated lamellar twinning. Fracture The way a gemstone breaks in a random direction other than cleavage and parting is called fracture. Many gemstones have conchoidal fracture pattern, example quartz, garnet, etc. But some have hackley or splintery fracture pattern, example nephrite, jadeite, ivory. In polished and faceted kyanite, the cross fractures are often identifiable under microscope or through a lens and serves as an important identifying property in addition to specific gravity and refractive index. Streak. Color of a mineral in finely powdered form is referred to as its streak. Streak of a softer mineral can be obtained by rubbing it against unglazed porcelain plate or streak plate which has a hardness of 7. In most idiomorphic deeply colored minerals such as malachite and azurite, color of mineral as well as its powder remains the same. Similarly, many metallic ores, the two generally differ. Steel gray colored hematite produces cherry red streak and golden yellow pyrite yields black streak. The streak of allochromatic minerals is colorless. The streak test is useful for identification of only a few gemstones like gunmetal, commercial name of splendent hematite, magnetite, lodestone and pyrite. It rather an estimative test, only an inconspicuous part of the stone can be used for the test. Luster. The term luster refers to the general appearance of the mineral surface in reflected light. There are two types of luster, metallic and non-metallic. In minerals with metallic bonding, the energy gaps between the ground state and excited states of electrons are generally much smaller than those for ionic and covalently bonded substances. The energy of visible light is generally much smaller than the energy gaps in ionic and covalent structures. In metallic compounds, however, there are large numbers of excited states with energies that are available in the entire range of the visible spectrum. This means that any quantum of energy striking the surface of a metal or partially metallic bonded crystal is absorbed and immediately re-emitted as visible light. This results in the typical metallic luster where light is reflected almost completely. The ionic and covalent bonded crystals normally have non-metallic luster. Depending upon the nature of luster, they are classified as vitreous, subvitreous, resinous, greasy, silky, adamantine, velvety, and dull. Diaphanity. Diaphanous or transparent stone is valued more than a semi-transparent, translucent, or opaque stone. Particularly for a light-colored or an uncolored stone, transparency forms an essential qualification. Diaphanity depends on the clarity of a substance light passing through a substance is subjected to. Reflection of some part at the surface, scattering by surface irregularities, refraction, reduction in velocity, absorption of the spectrum if it is colored, absorption on scattering by inclusions, reflection and scattering by weak planes such as cleavage planes and fractures, absorption of shorter wavelength radiation and remittance in the form of visible light. The substance or its inclusion is fluorescent. Inclusion and other flaws reduce transparency of the substance. Opacity and whiteness. Opacity and whiteness of milky quartz is due to densely packed fluid inclusions, which otherwise would have been colorless and transparent. So also, 
Transparency is lost if the stone has too many fractures. Transparency is controlled by the smoothness of the surface. It can be observed that when a transparent material is ground on the surface, loses its transparency as in ground glass. Likewise, the exciting of dirt or grease reduces transparency. Deeply colored stone like ruby and emerald seldom occur in completely transparent form. There appears to be an unexplained relationship between depth of color and diaphanity, flawless in rubies and emeralds. Tenacity and toughness. Tenacity is the cohesiveness of atoms in a mineral, that is, the resistance offered by a mineral to breaking, crushing, bending or tearing. Most minerals like quartz and diamond get powdered when crushed, brittle. Some like talc and gypsum can be cut into slices by using a knife, sectile. Metallic minerals can be hammered, can be thin sheets, malleable and also can be ductile or drawn into wires. A few minerals like talc and mica can be bent, flexible by applying pressure. When pressure is released, some of them return to the original shape, elastic, while some do not. Talc is flexible, whereas mica is both flexible and elastic. Optical properties of gemstones. Any property of a gemstone that is dependent on light is an optical property. In the absence of chemical tests, the optical properties of the gemstones, particularly polished gems, need to be carefully studied for identification purpose. The following is a list of the different optical properties commonly studied in gemological laboratories. Color. Color is the most attractive property of a gemstone, although generally ineffective for identification purpose. For example, quartz can be colorless, transparent, rock crystal, purple, amethyst, pink, rose quartz, brown, smoky quartz, and even green depending upon the impurities present. Similarly, depending upon small amounts of transition ion impurities, corundum can be red, ruby, pink, pink sapphire, blue, blue sapphire, yellow, yellow sapphire, green, green sapphire, and even colorless, white sapphire. Understanding the cause of coloration of crystals is therefore an important and interesting branch of mineral physics. Hope the, for the present purpose, only a brief idea about the different causes of coloration of gemstones has been given. The gemologist should do better not to identify a gemstone only on the basis of its color. Plates one and three, show the wide variation of colors encountered in the world of gemstones. Transparency. Transparency affects both beauty and value of a gem. Transparency depends mainly on the clarity of the substance. Light passing through a mineral is always subjected to reflection of some part at the surface, scattering by surface irregularities, part absorption if it is colored, absorption and scattering by inclusions, and reflection and scattering by weak planes like cleavage, fracture, etc. Degree of transparency. Degree of transparency, clarity, is very important in gem evaluation. Greater the transparency, higher will be the quality of the gem. Inclusions and other flaws, external or internal, as well as color, reduce transparency. For a light color or colorless stone, brilliance depends appreciably on its transparency. Deep color stones like ruby, emerald, etc. seldom occur in complete transparent form. There appears to be an unexplained reverse relationship between the depth of color and transparency. Flawlessness in rubies and emeralds. Similarly, densely included stones are not very transparent. 
For this reason, ketoint and star stones are usually not very transparent. Categories of Transparency The following is a table of comparative transparency. Objects are normally classified into these categories. A mineral is said to be transparent when it is viewed through the stone can be seen clearly. Example, rock crystal, topaz, etc. It is called a semi-transparent when it is viewed through the stone will be blurred but still recognizable. It is said to be translucent when it transmits some light but object cannot be seen through it. Example, chrysoprase, jadeite. The mineral is said to be opaque when it is sufficiently dense optically to prevent the passage of any light. Example, malachite, turquoise. Refractive index. Refractive index of a crystal is an essential property for several reasons. The refractive index of a crystal is the ratio between sine of the angle of incidence to the sine of the angle of refraction. It is expressed as refractive index equals sine of the angle of incidence divided by the sine of angle of refraction. Only glass and crystals of isometric system are singly refractive while all other minerals belonging to tetragonal, trigonal, hexagonal, orthorhombic, monoclinic and triclinic systems have two refractive indices. Refractive index or indices Ri of each mineral is unique. There of course are overlaps in ranges but still determination of Ri along with other tests can help in mineral identification. Refractometer. The Ri of a gemstone or gem is determined by refractometer. The instrument is designed optically to use the phenomenon of critical angle, total internal reflection, to provide direct Ri reading and is also known as critical angle refractometer. However, this principle can only be used if the Ri of the gemstone being tested is less than the refractometer's lead glass prism which has an Ri of 1.86. If the gemstone's Ri is greater than the Ri of this prism, the ray will be refracted out and there will be no total internal reflection. The gemstone is placed on this glass prism in such a way that one of its flat facets is in good contact of the prism. In reality, however, a contact fluid, saturated solution of sulfur in diiodomethane and tetraiodoethylene with Ri equal to 1.81 is used to ensure good optical contact between the gem and the lead glass prism. Total internal reflection. The principle of total internal reflection occurs as follows. As light converges from the prism onto the surface of the gem, ray I1 and I2 which have larger angle of incidence compared to the critical angle are reflected back into the denser prism following the loss of total internal reflection. Rays I4 and I5 whose angle of incidence is less than the critical angle are refracted into the gem. But ray I3 which is incident just as the critical angle travels along the interface of the two mediums. Thus when light rays passes from a dense medium to a rarer medium of gemstone, the light rays will be reflected back from the surface of the gemstone over an arc of incident angle greater than that of critical angle of incidence. This critical angle is determined by the Ri's of both the denser medium and the gemstone. The dense medium in the refractometer is a glass prism of known Ri. The critical angle gives the direct measure Ri of gemstone as follows. Sign of critical angle equals Ri of rarer medium gemstone divided by Ri of dense medium prism of refractometer. Ri of gemstone equals sign of critical angle into Ri of refractometer prism. 
RI for gemological purpose is defined in terms of yellow monochromatic light having a wavelength of 589.3 nm sodium light which gives sharpest and most easily seen shadow edge. In the basic construction of the critical angle refractometer, the light rays arriving at the interface between the gemstone and the glass prism and having an angle of incidence less than the critical angle, ION, are not reflected into the lens system. However, those rays having an angle of incidence greater than the critical angle are reflected into the lenses and illuminate a scale graduated in RI values. The image of the scale is inverted by a mirror and then focused by the eyepiece. The end result is viewed as a dark top section and an illuminated lower part. The horizontal shadow edge between the two parts is the measurement of the refractive index of the gem. Luminescence In contrast to the color of a gemstone, which is observed in daylight, there are certain minerals which produce color or visible light in darkness under certain special circumstances. This phenomenon is known as luminescence. It is found that when certain materials acquire surplus energy in one form or another, but below the level of burning or glow, they convert this energy into a cold radiation whose wavelength generally lies in the visible section of the spectrum. The mechanism producing this cold radiation or luminescence is associated with the excitation of atoms within the material. The surplus energy acquired by luminescent substances is used up in moving electrons out of their normal orbital state or ground state temporarily into orbits of a higher energy level, excited state. This high energy state is unstable, so the electrons relax into a lower energy excited state that is slightly more stable. When these electrons eventually return to their more stable orbits, ground state, they give up the surplus energy in the form of electromagnetic radiations. This emitted energy is always less than the excited energy. Since wavelength increases as the energy decreases, Emission occurs at larger wavelengths than the excitation wavelengths. For example, stimulus of shorter wavelengths of ultraviolet, approximately 400 nm, can result in emission of longer wavelengths in the visible range. Example, natural ruby frequently gives red, approximately 700 nm luminescence under long wave UV. In case of gemstones, the best stimulant is the radiation by invisible shorter wavelengths or ultraviolet rays, UV. UV lamps that produce light of two different wavelengths check luminescence of gemstones normally. Short wave UV lamp, 253.7 nm. Long wave UV lamp, 365 nm. Fluorescence and Phosphorescence Certain minerals respond better to short-wave UV radiation, while some fluoresce better in long-wave UV radiation. A substance is fluorescent if the emission of light stops as soon as the energy source causing it is removed. If it continues to glow even after the source of stimulant is cut off, then it is called phosphorescence, example, kunzite. Luminescence, fluorescence or phosphorescence should always be checked in a dark room. In all forms of luminescence, the light emitted is either due to some intrinsic property of the material, example lattice defeat or in example lattice defect in diamond, or due to the presence of luminescent impurities called activators, example chromite in ruby. Pleochroism. As pleochroism is a useful identifying property for a gemstone, an instrument called dichroscope is used for quick determine. An instrument called dichroscope is used for quick discrimination. It consists of a cleaved rhomb 
of optical quality calcite, Iceland spar, which is mounted in a glass tube having an eyepiece at one end and a square aperture at the other end. A glass prism is cemented to each end of the calcite rhomb to allow the light to enter and leave in a straight line. When the colored gemstone, if doubly refracting and pleochroic, is viewed in direction other than that of an optic axis, the two images, which appear side by side, will differ in shade or color. Singly refracting stones will not show the change of shade or color. Optic sign and other optical properties. Ordinary unpolarized light waves vibrate in all directions at right angles to their line of travel. If unpolarized light passes through a doubly refractive material such as gemstone, it emerges as two separate polarized rays. These rays will vibrate only in a single plane at right angle to each other and to their direction of travel. Polarizing filters, Nicol prism, helps in producing this polarized ray by separating out ordinary rays from the extraordinary ray. Polariscope. A polariscope is a gemological instrument. It uses two sets of polarizing filters for getting crossed or extinction position. This crossed extinction position has practical application in identification of gems. Polariscopes are used for the following purposes. To ascertain isotropism, anisotropism of a gem mineral. The strain in minerals can be determined by the polariscope. Many gems in synthetics like diamond, synthetic spinel, glass, etc. show internal strain which result in anomalous double refraction when viewed in polariscope. To determine the optical character of the minerals, to obtain the interference figure and to determine the pleochroism of the mineral. Spectroscopy The perceived color of most objects is the result of their ability to absorb certain wavelengths or colors in the light passing through them or reflected off their surface. This suppression of part of the spectrum in the illuminating light is known as selective absorption and helps in identification of some gemstones. In majority of the gemstones, the color is related to the presence of transition elements and this color is due to the selective absorption of wavelengths in the light illuminating the gemstones. To know which wavelengths have been absorbed, a spectroscope is used. The spectroscope spreads out the light from the gemstones into spectral colors. Absorbed wavelengths will form dark lines or bands across the spectrum and is called absorption spectrum. The transition elements in a gemstone produce these lines, bands or doublets, two closely spaced lines. The position of these lines or bands can be different for different gems having same transition element. In some cases, light which is illuminating the gemstone stimulate the transition element. Instead of absorption, they emit light at these same wavelengths to produce emission spectrum or fluorescent lines. Ruby and spinel produce fluorescent lines or emission spectra. Physical optical effects in gems. Gemstones have a number of optical effects involving reflection, dispersion, scattering, interference, etc. The following are the dominant properties. Iridescence. Interference of light in the interior of a mineral may produce a series of colors as the angle of incidence changes. This is caused by the presence of extremely thin layers or regular structures beneath the surface of a gemstone. Example, presence of millions of regularly arranged submicroscopic spheres equal sizes of crystobalite or silica gel in precious opal. These layers or structures act as diffraction gratings for white light, enhancing some color and cancelling others, 
depending upon the interplanar spacing, wavelength of light, refractive index of mineral, and angle of incidence. Opalescence. Sometimes irregular internal structures lead to scattering of light within a mineral producing a milky appearance known as opalescence. Labradorescence. Iridescence caused through light scattered by extremely fine, less than one-tenth micron or thinner in width, X solution lamellae in the range of anorthite 47 to anorthite 58 in labradorite. Adularescence, also known as Schiller, a bluish sheen seen in the moonstone variety of feldspar. Chatoyancy, in reflected light, some minerals have a silky appearance which results from closely packed parallel fibers, acicular growth or from a parallel alignment of inclusions or cavities. When a cabocon gemstone is cut from a mineral or mineral aggregate, it shows a band of light at right angles to the fibers or direction of inclusions. This property is known as catoyancy and is particularly impressive in cat's eye, tiger's eye, and hawk's eye. Asterism. In some crystals, particularly those of hexagonal system, inclusions may be arranged in three crystallographic directions at 120 degrees to each other. A cabocon from such a stone shows what might be called a triple chatoyancy, that is, one beam of light at each direction of inclusions producing a six-pointed star. This phenomenon, often encountered in star rubies and sapphires, is termed as asterism and results from scattering of light from inclusions of rutile arranged in three crystallographic directions. Star diopside and some phlogopitic mica also show asterism. Organic material as gemstones. Certain gems are fashioned from recent or fossil organic materials. The notable ones are amber. Amber is fossil resin, originally exuded from coniferous trees, their ages ranging from carboniferous to Pleistocene. During the course of fossilization over several million years, this resin undergoes some alteration, hardens, and becomes less reactive to chemical alterations. Air bubbles are frequent in amber, and with luck, there occurs bits of fossil wood and even fragments of animals like ants. An exhibit in the Stuttgart National History Museum in Germany, sample measuring 3.7 into 5 centimeters and containing about 2,000 ants, mosquitoes, spiders, termites, tree crickets, and occasionally even centipede, scorpions, feathers of birds, and even vertebrates like lizards. Not all amber contains exciting inclusions. Percentage of curious inclusions range from about 1.0% of all ambers collected from Dominican Republic to 0.1% from the Baltic region. Varieties of amber. There are different varieties of amber. Baltic amber, bony amber, block amber, fatty amber, etc. Their general properties being more or less the same. The properties of amber are as follows. Specific gravity, 1.08. Hardness, 2.5 to 3. Refractive index, 1.54. Brittleness and sensitivity to heat makes it a delicate gem. It softens at 180 degrees centigrade and melts between 250 to 300 degrees centigrade. Most common colors are yellow, yellow-brown to reddish-brown. Some others are carnelian red, creamy white to white, shades of green-blue and bluish-white, brown and black. Transparency depends on amount of inclusions present. Those with myriads of tiny bubbles are almost opaque. Luster is resinous 
and fracture conchoidal. Under LW, UV luminescence is bluish white, while it is greenish under SW UV. Also, when rubbed vigorously on cloth, amber develops static electricity and can attract pieces of cloth. Optically, amber should be isotropic since it is amorphous. However, certain amounts of birefringence and interference color are generally present. In India, some disseminated ambers are found in tertiary lignite deposits in Panandro mines in Kutch and Rajpardi mines near Rajpipla in Gujarat. These are small and devoid of organic remains. Coral. Red and white corals are popular gems in India, the former being traditionally referred to as Prabala. Corals can be red, pink, white, grayish blue, golden yellow brown and even black in color. Compositionally, coral is calcium carbonate. It has a refractive index of about 2.6 to 2.7. However, Presence of high amount of organic matter, as in black coral, may lower the specific gravity. Refractive index is of no great significance since it is formed of cryptocrystalline calcite. But growth lines are generally present and serve as a good indicator of the authenticity of the coral. Plastic, sealing wax and glass are the commonly used imitations but can be readily identified because of their lack of growth lines. Also, these imitations fail to react on application of dilute hydrochloride. Created coral, common in Jaipur gem market, is made out of powder of pure calcite bonded under suitably high pressure. Such material possesses uniform texture and color and also has a uniformly lower specific gravity, less than 2.5. In India, coral reefs are located in the Gulf of Kutch, Gulf of Mannar, Lakshadweep, and Andaman and Nicobar Islands. A vast majority of precious coral, however, is imported from Italy and other countries. Ivory. Ivory trade is presently banned in India, and therefore only antique pieces can turn up for testing. Ivory from tusks of elephant is white, yellowing with time. Other properties are hardness equals 2 to 3, specific gravity 1.7 to 2.0 and refractive index less than 1.54. Under ultraviolet, bluish to violetish white fluorescence is generally observed. Aged ivory tend to develop radial as well as concentric cracks. Rough ivory has hackley fracture. Vegetable ivory, that is, hard kernels of nuts of certain palm trees, other properties are hardness 2 to 3, specific gravity 1.7 to 2.0, and refractive index approximately 1.54. Jet. Jet is uncommon in India. It is a form of fossilized wood with hardness equal to 3.5 and specific gravity of 1.30. Pearl. Pearl, known as Muktika or Mukta in Sanskrit and Moti in Hindi, is a well sought after gemstone in India. It has a wide range of descriptive terms for different varieties that include natural pearl, cultured pearl, non nucleated pearl, blister pearl, nacreous pearl, non nacreous pearl, etc. Pearl is constituted of calcium carbonate, that is, aragonite. 82 to 86 percent, along with concholin, 10 to 14 percent, and water, 2 to 4 percent. The specific gravity of pearl is 2.61 to 2.78. Hardness is 2.5 to 3.5. Luster is pearly, and fluorescence under LW UV is bluish white in all varieties, and faint reddish brown for black pearls. Shells, shells of bivalves gastropods and nautilus are used for production of low-cost ornaments and decorative items. These are formed of overlapping layers of submicroscopic crystals of calcium carbonate. Mother of pearl from various shells 
has an iridescent luster. Shells of the turbo sea snail are used to produce imitation pearls called antiles or oil pearls. Tortoise shell. This can hardly be treated as a gem but is still a fancy material. It is derived mainly from the shell of the hawksbill sea turtle and is constituted mostly of keratin, a protein forming the basis of horns, claws, nails, etc. It has hardness of 2.5, specific gravity of 1.29 and refractive index of 1.55. It is frequently imitated by plastics. Under microscope, the dark patches of tortoise shell will be seen to contain swarms of spherical reddish particles, whereas in plastics, the imitative dark patch lack this structure. Also, the edges of the dark areas are more sharply defined in plastics. The yellow part of the shell fluoresces a bluish white under LWUV. Conclusion Gemstones, because of their enchanting nature, can be identified with the help of physical and optical properties, and the properties also helps not only to identify the gemstones, but also to distinguish from synthetic and imitation stones. Physical and optical properties of the gemstone guide for the cutting and polishing of gemstones. Gemstones have provided an irresistible attraction to all human beings from ancient times. They were considered as symbols of wealth, power and wearing attractive jewelry by men and women can be traced back to prehistoric times. Gemstones are major foreign exchange earners in many of the countries of the world.